stuff in it. It's dark, it's like night time. And I have my trusty counter, so hopefully I won't go too far out of the timeline. So, when you were a child, did you ever dream about unicorns and cotton candy clouds? Because I did. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge dreamer. And a Pisces, in fact, so I don't want to get into the debate about astrology and whether you believe in it or not, but generally Pisces are romantic idealists, and I um, definitely identify with that description. Um, when you're a child, you have time to daydream and fantasize about the way the world could be. Often it is described, I was described um, as being very imaginative and it would often run away with me. But I was inspired by all the cartoons and fairy tales and happily ever afters and the amazing adventures that they would go on. But as you grow up, reality kind of hits you pretty hard. So I'm still a dreamer, there's no doubt about that, but it's fantastic to have an imagination, yes? I agree, however, it can be destructive if unbalanced. So if you know the old saying, too much of a good thing is bad for you, it is a constant journey of self-reflection and development that keeps the wheels turning. Today, I'm here to spark your thoughts and process on the topic that I, I'm pretty heavily engaged with at the moment, and it's around quality of life and, and finding the balance of that. So, balance. <laughs> balance. An even distribution of weight enabling something or someone to remain upright and sturdy. Or, a situation in which different elements are equal or in the correct proportions. Now, I underline correct proportions because for me, this is what really resonates. Equality doesn't necessarily mean being 50-50. It means what is right for you for that instance or what is right in that instance if there's no you in it. Um, so, correct proportions is something that I find really difficult to find. But I'll continue on with the next slide, thank you. Now, being Generation Y, probably, uh, some of you are pretty tech savvy. Most of you that know me know that I'm not very tech savvy. Um, so, from everything from Google to Facebook to YouTube and so on, we're in the information age, or we grew up in the information age. The previous era uh, was the industrial age, where all things industrial was a part of the boom. Nowadays, Economically and socially, it seems information is the boom. It's around us and we're absorbed in it 24-7. So I spent a good afternoon, and I mean a really long afternoon, um, browsing pages and pages and pages of information on balance, emotion and happiness. And I was a bit overwhelmed, to tell you the truth. I, um, I really struggled with trying to find that concise little bit of information that gave me all the answers as we do look for. Um, and all the creators of the content claim that they were correct. Now, I struggled with this because I don't believe in one true fact. So it's, it's a combination of, of a majority of things and, and situational based. So it was really, really hard to try and pinpoint what I was trying to say. The truth of the matter is there is no one thing. There are many and they vary. And just in, sorry, can I just go back? Just in that saying, getting information off the net is like taking a drink from a fire hydrant, in case you can't read that back there, <laughs> is the best description I found that whole afternoon. Now you can go, thank you. Um, so instead of giving your textbook lesson on the theories of balance, I will say this, explore, open your eyes, open your ears, and listen, listen with your heart, to the information, the resources that are so readily out there and filter the pieces out that aren't relevant to you because there will be pieces that aren't relevant to you. A very important thing to remember though, don't let it overwhelm you like that little cartoon, two slides back, um, it was pretty, pretty overwhelming. Slow down, that's the part. You see, we're so busy nowadays that we sometimes get caught up in the stuff we've got to do. Now, the stuff we've got to do, and it can range in a, a variety of things, as you can see on the, on the slide previous, was um, homework and cleaning and all sorts of things, dishes, there you go, um, shopping. The, the things you've got to do that you just can't run away from. So slowing down is 
a way to reduce the, the I guess, the feeling of gotta do, gotta do, gotta do, keep pushing forward. So, why are we so reluctant to take this advice? It's pretty simple advice. I get told it all the time, constantly. And why is it so hard to follow? Is it because we think, well, that's just a simple answer? It's too simple, yeah? Kiss. One of my favourite teachers in high school repeatedly reminded me of the KISS procedure. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Simple. And sometimes when we get crowded with too many things happening in our life, we forget the simple things in life. And the simple things in life are often the ones that are the most important. Next slide. So why do we complicate things? That's a question. I know Alicia touched on questions before questioning things, not, not everything is set in stone, it's not always right for you. And I don't want to stand up here and say this is the way of you know getting quality life. I want you to question within yourself. Why do we complicate things? Someone I was in um, someone introduced me to the Maslow theory, which a friend a very good friend of mine actually we have very deep and meaningful conversations about psychology and the way things happen and so forth. So he introduced me to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is a theory in psychology proposed by Abraham Maslow in his paper, um, A Theory of Human Motivation in 1943. So the largest and most fundamental level on this, on this diagram is the bottom, um, much like a foundation. Now these are the physio physiological needs and I won't go into too much detail because it's, it can be quite complex and is one of those I agree, I don't agree situations. But the peak of the pyramid, as you can see, um, is a representat representation of self-actualization. Sometimes put as the desire to become more and more of what one is. So basically the best of what you can be. Now logically a human being will strive for each level systematically. Once you have basic needs, air, food, water, sex, sleep, etc., one will progress to the next level of need. Safety, security of body, employment, resources, etc. And so on and so forth until we get to the peak. The needs of such as morality, creativity, spontaneity, etc. I would like to pose another question. Why are we giving up our basic needs in the stead of needs that are that form the level of self-actualization. So for example, I'll give you a personal one, because I believe personal stories of what really create connection. One of my morals is to work hard and to achieve my goal, instilled in me by my loving mother. And another self-actualization trait that contributes to the situation is problem solving. So as the Youth Development Officer, I work on projects, policies and other bits and pieces in between, to address issues that relate to young people in the community. Now, if I have a pressing problem and I'm on a time schedule and I need to get the job finished to get a result, I'll skip lunch. Who here has done that? I know you have, even if you're not putting up your hands. You skip lunch. You do whatever you need to get that job done. Why? For me, desire of self-actualization. I want to be the best version I can be. And to me, that means striving for a purpose, for a greater good, for showing the world that we can create a better world. But it overrules my basic need to eat. Yet we all know through better judgment that it will have a negative effect on me to skip a meal. I'll get hungry. I'll get cranky. I won't have any concentration. So why is it I still sacrifice it? I mean, yes, I'm not starving, therefore my basic needs do not overrule the need for self-actualization. As I am sure that it would be the case in someone in a less fortunate situation where food is not readily available and indeed going to take place over finishing a project to achieve self-worth. So what is one thing you sacrifice regularly to achieve or do something? On your chairs you will have a piece of paper and a pen if you're not sitting on it. I would like you all to take the time to just write down one thing you sacrifice, and it could be for anything. It could be for playing sport, it could be for going to work, education, hanging out with friends, whatever it is. What is one thing that you sacrifice to achieve something?
and I'll show you one of mine. Next slide. People I love. This is pretty devastating, and it's not very nice to admit this, but even today, prior to today's event, I was in a state of, oh geez, I haven't finished my talk. I'm, I'm glad to hear there were others in that same situation. However, um, it doesn't make it any better. And even whilst writing about this topic, my husband came in, my new husband, bored. It's raining, there's nothing to do, and usually we do things together. So he's sitting there drumming on the table. He's talking to me, you know, trying to hold a conversation, and I couldn't concentrate. So I got a little bit cranky. As you do, you try and focus on one thing, and somebody's trying to take something away from you, your attention, to achieve that goal. I got cranky, and then I instantly felt bad because. Hang on a minute. Aren't I just being a little bit hypocritical? I wouldn't admit to him though. No, I was too proud and I had a speech to write. So, would anyone like to share what they wrote down? That was a quick example. Yes. Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Another one I identify with lack of sleep. And we stay up to early hours in the morning to try and finish something that we're trying to achieve. And then the next day, we could have been in a better position, maybe, if we had some sleep. So therefore, one has to question, does the goal actually suffer from the lack of sleep that you had in the first place from trying to achieve that goal? Another question, four questions today. So how can you change the situation to balance it out? Sleep's a pretty good one, pretty easy, in a sense. More sleep. <laughs> What led you to the sleep deprivation? Timelines, overstretching yourself, taking on too much, saying yes to things that maybe probably wouldn't have been a comfortable fit. And that comes back to resources. A lot of the time we do, uh, a lot of the time it is to do with the balance and only you can determine the right balance that is for you. And it's a very, very difficult thing to find. But I just mentioned resources and Resources, the balance of resources is a really big thing. So resources we think of, you know, paper, pens, that's a resource. But what about time? Time is resource. If we don't have the time, we can't do it. So you've got to balance the resources from in and out. And they're not equal, it's not black and white. There's lots of shades of grey in life. So basically it comes down to the personal investment or their opinion on what the balance should be and what measure each thing is that you balance out. Play. Time for play. Now, I learnt about a rule um, earlier, just before getting up here, that means that my, my previous idea might not work with the situation or the constraints of the program. So, I'm just going to talk a bit about play. When you were a child, what was your favourite game? Anybody? I used to climb trees. Okay, I love to climb trees. It's not really a game because I grew up in Rook, which is a very small town, so I didn't have many people to play with. So I had to play with myself. That was the animals of nature, really. So trees were my friends. We forget how to play. I can spend hours in a tree. I'd never do that now. I don't have hours to spare. So for now, I encourage you to take a long, hard look in the mirror. Look at your reflection. Reflect on things in life, not just you. Ask yourself, what do I sacrifice? And write it down. Write it down. Sticky notes, post-it notes. Absolutely a godsend. Love them. Stick them up. Remind yourself, what do you sacrifice? Maybe, probably a little bit negative, so maybe then put a good thing on how to stop sacrificing or balance it. Put them up. Remind yourself what you need to do to balance it out. Google, to your heart's content, another one that I found in the afternoon. It doesn't really relate, but it does. Look at the brain. It's just one side's going for it. The other's just boxed in. Google, use YouTube, look at the internet, talk to people, find inspiration in your community. Whatever it is that sparks and gives you information that you need to build on more resources and make those decisions for you. So, yeah. Hard, I know. That's probably my biggest, biggest, biggest downfall. Pucker up, people. Kiss. <laughs>
any time you can. We want more kisses in the world. And reconnect with your inner child. Dream, have fun. I mean, come on, it's better than unicorns and candy clouds. It's amazing. What is life if there is no quality?